If you've been around for a while, you may remember a few years ago when I got a pair of ghost mantises. I get asked all the time if I still have them. Unfortunately, their average lifespan is around eight months. So, I mean, that was three years ago. They are no longer around. I've really missed keeping mantises. So I had to get a couple more. Of course, I had to get another ghost mantis, which is what this video is actually about. But I did also get a spiny flower mantis. How about you guys stay away from each other? Today, we're going to be setting up a tank for little Little ghosty here and if you have any name suggestions for either of these I am all ears I haven't named them yet let's go ahead and put the tank together you're just gonna want to make sure that the surface has been wiped clean as well as all of the rocks you'll be using using your silicone you're going to add a little bit to the side of the rock you want to stick onto the back of the terrarium for some of them I did it on the side so that they would be like little shelves in there I kind of have an idea of what I want to do so I left some gaps but I do want one section to look very rocky I'm gonna let this cure for a few days and once it's dried then we'll come back for the next step Next, we're going to mix up some powdered aqua soil. I just do this in my old coffee grinder. We got an espresso machine a year ago, so we no longer use it. I'm going to add a little bit of sphagnum moss petals. The petals are just a lot smaller than the long fiber. You could always just cut up the long fiber if that's what you have. Now we are going to add water. It's going to get very like thick and pasty. Just gonna add a little bit at a time. I don't want it too wet, otherwise it's going to take forever to dry and hold into place. But I do want it all like saturated. Okay. Here's our terrarium that we put the silicone rocks in yesterday. It has been curing for 24 hours. You definitely wanna wait at least 24 hours. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and spoon this into here. And I'm just gonna add it to anywhere that there's not rocks. You guys, this stuff is so messy, so be careful. It's very like sticky. You can wash it off, it's just a pain in the butt because it's like glue. I'm gonna make sure I get it pressed really well around the rocks and that all the gaps are filled in and that it's pressed down pretty well. We got it! This is the point that if you have any smaller rocks you wanna use in here, you can just go ahead and Firmly press them into the aqua soil mix. I have this bin of moss, just a bunch of different kinds of moss that I'm going to be adding pieces into here. So I'm just gonna pull off very small pieces like this and pressing them into the substrate. Okay, I actually need to move this out of my way. <laughs> I'll just kind of use my fingers, you know, to position it and then I'll use my tweezers to press it in really well around the roots so that again it doesn't fall as we lift this up tilt it upright i mean just like that oh it's so cute already i'm so excited as i'm positioning it i'm just kind of trying to keep like mosses like connected so where i started here i mean i do have a random one there but where i started here i'm just kind of trying to like trail it through i don't know so the the like moss leads to leads together, like runs together. I just think it makes it look a lot nicer. That's just how I prefer it. But of course there are a lot of different tastes, you know, styles, whatever. Here we go. I'm gonna add a little more of that one. As I'm putting it in, I'm personally choosing to leave gaps between, like I'm not going to fill in all of the background because I kind of want a little bit of the soil, the substrate to show. I think it looks nicer that way. That's just my preference, but you could do however you want. And also like the moss will continue to grow in here. We won't waste moss where it's going to grow in anyway, you know? Now I'm just gonna give it a little spray. Mostly so that I can wipe the substrate off the walls, but also to help like help stick the moss in. So, moment of truth. <laughs> this is the most nerve-wracking part. Perfect! Now we get to the layering and adding plants. I will say I kind of thought in advance what I wanted to add into here as far as like bark and wood, wood pieces and also plants went and larger rocks. So I did know that down here 
I wanted to add in a larger rock. I knew back here wasn't really gonna show because I want some plants to grow behind it. And then I also knew I wanted to add a bark piece here. And I also, I do kind of want my substrate to flow upward toward the back so it gets deeper toward the back. So that's what I kept in mind as I was placing the rocks and also the moss. We are gonna go in with our pebbles, like smaller pebbles. Next is a layer of charcoal. I'm going to add a layer of sphagnum moss, damp sphagnum, just a very thin layer. And these, this is actually not long fiber sphagnum. These are, this is sphagnum moss petals, which is actually a lot easier to find than the long fiber um, because not as many people use it, I don't think. All right, this is my substrate I'm going to use for the base and it is one quarter my like just regular potting mix and then three parts cocoa coir. And then I also like to add in just like a small handful, obviously depending on the size of the terrarium of the aqua soil, just because there are so many nutrients in, in that. And the plants are really going to love it. With the backside of my little <laughs> terrarium tweezer things, I'm going to push it down all the way to the bottom and like push away the bottom layers so that the cocoa coir mix is what actually like shows. As I'm pushing it away, I'm just filling in the empty space where the pebbles were with the mix. So there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna slope it how I want. The rock I wanted to add into the back is this. I'm not sure again what kind it is. I'm not very good at this kind of a thing. I just find the pieces I like to add in like that. I also have a bin of just like mossy bark. Okay, wait, that's actually pretty close to what I need. Okay, I found the one. This is the one. With the exception of these domino peace lily babies, all of these other plants are ones I've actually just found growing inside of other pots. You know, those little scraggler plants we somehow end up with. I'm really glad that I have like a good use for them. So first I have this, I think this is called a kangaroo or a rabbit foot fern. I don't know, it's just a really cute fern and I think I'm going to actually, once, uh, once I end up with a mantis to put in here, uh, probably in the spring, I, I think that it'll like to climb all over that. So um, I also have this tiny little fern, no idea what it is. Again, I think it's a fern. It also has some moss on it. So I'm actually going to put this up here behind that like piece of, wood I put in, piece of bark, and then just push the bark into, oh yeah, that's really cute. Okay, then back here behind the rock, I'm putting just these peace lilies. And I'm gonna put all of them, there's four. I took these out of my mother plant. I recently did a video about uh, how to heal your peace lily because mine was going through some things. And I decided to just take these babies out and not even deal with them give them a fresh start somewhere else inside of a terrarium. Maybe I'll put these other two right here. And the last one I'm gonna put in is what I believe is a Boston fern. Again, I just found this growing in a bin of sphagnum moss. Love that, but I don't know how it happens because I cannot keep this plant happy like anywhere else <laughs> except for when it randomly pops up. No, I decided, I decided that actually needs to go in the front on the other side. There is with our plants. I could definitely add more. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more moss. This is the moss I will be adding somewhere up here. I think probably just over here uh, because I think that it looks cool. It looks like grass kind of, and it's very flat. I don't know. Hopefully it would like fill in and just look like a lush yard. <laughs> Now we're going to go ahead and add some extra little touches of like pebbles and rocks and things. Um, yeah, just like here and there. Yay, okay. Yay, I'm so excited. So I finally got all the stuff in. We're going to give it one more like really solid spray. Ah, 
This one's a little too top heavy. You guys are not gonna believe this, but my microphone's crapped out again, so here I am voicing over this video. Actually decided to add in this little piece of grape vine. I don't know, I got it at Petco and I decided to add this because mantises really like to hang upside down. And not only that, it's actually very important for them while they molt so that they come out formed correctly. So I decided to add in this piece of grape wood, grapevine, maybe spider wood. I don't know, some some kind of wood, okay? And I'm going to put it in there so that my man so that my mantis can have more surfaces to hang upside down on um, other than the ceiling because I actually don't want it to molt on the ceiling because yeah, then I wouldn't be able to remove the lid to spray inside of the tank. So just a little extra information that nobody asked for. Um, I do have to move this Pilia peperomioides baby because it's, I put it right in the center <laughs> and the wood has to go in the center. All right, so here we are, the finished product, and I really like it. There's a lot more places for my mantis to hang upside down on and molt on and just hang out on, you know, a lot more to explore. And I am personally very happy with the way it looks. I think it looks so cool. So yeah, everything has held up pretty well. I did this actually back in November, so that's exciting. Anyway, okay, here it is with the new piece of wood. I think this is so much better. There's so many more places for Ghosty to climb around and hide and molt. I must say this setup is much better than the setup I did for my last Mantis. So I am extremely, extremely pleased, uh, but you'll have to let me know what you think. So the plants I have in here are Boston Fern. Back there we have a little Pilia peperomioides baby, some Peperomia hoffmanii, a bunch of moss, and then a domino peace lily back there. Again, more moss, pretty much moss all up the back. From the side view, you can see that the moss is all very well rooted, so it's going to spread. I'm very happy with that, as well as the moss that I put on this little piece of bark. Okay, my camera's having a hard time. Oh, there we go. It is also rooted back here, so that's very exciting. I'm super happy to see all the plants doing well. Let's see what this side looks like. No roots over, well, you can see a little root on the domino piece lily, and these were just cuttings when I put them in here. I hope Ghosta is going to like it. That's not the name, I have no idea what the name is. Again, please leave me a recommendation. All right, let's add little Ghosty in here. I am so excited to watch this little beauty grow. I know for a fact I'm going to sit here and stare at the tanks for hours because it's like a lava lamp, but better, like, they're just so cool and it's fun to be able to watch nature like close up like this. So I highly, highly recommend <laughs> getting a mantis or trying your hand at mantis care if you feel the same way about getting like up close. Maybe I'm making too much out of it. After I put Ghosty in here, I decided to add in some fruit flies so that they'd be crawling around and it could eat if needed. And look at this cool shot I captured. <gasps> I wish I had a different angle, but it's okay. You can still kind of see it. It it grabs, it catches a little fruit fly and then it eats it. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I hope you liked this video and maybe learned something, found it entertaining. I really appreciate you for stopping by and watching, but that is it for this one. I will see you in my next one. 